Yeah, it's just gone off. My primary flight display, the left-hand screen, has just gone off. It's completely black. I'm very lucky in that I do own a Cirrus SR22. It's a G3 version. We're up to G6 now, and it was built in 2007, which makes it 15 years old as I record this. Now, in terms of aircraft, that's not actually that old. If you take a look around the airport, you'll find other aircraft that are much older than that. But in terms of the technology inside the aircraft, just have a think for a second about what was new in the world of technology back in 2007. Today, Apple is going to reinvent the phone. So with 15 year old tech, it's not surprising that at some point in my flying career with those old screens, this happened to one of them. The left hand screen has just gone off. It's completely black. It looks like it's on, oh, but... It looks like the screen is not... Uh, like I can see lights. I think there's power to the screen, but I think the screen itself is actually gone, which is not what I wanted on this flight. My choices then were to repair the existing unit or upgrade, and I normally try and repair where possible. But when it comes to technology, I just thought it was a sign, and I just thought this was the chance to upgrade to something new in the cockpit. It's day one, and I'm down here at Blue Demon Aviation because today is the start of a brand new era for Echo Yankee Zoo. Yes, if you've watched the channel for a while, this is the old Tango Delta Sierra, Tango Papa Sierra now. First Cirrus I ever flew. This is what the cockpit looks like right now before we get started on the aircraft. The key change that you're going to see are these two screens here. This is the primary flight display, the PFD. And this is the multi-function display, the MFD. Both of these units are currently Avidyne branded units and these are the two main screens that are going to get pulled out. Some of the things that won't be changing though, the comms unit, that's going to stay the same here. These two units, these are what I use for navigation. This is the Garmin GTN 650. They do exactly the same job. I just have this second one for redundancy. These are staying here as is. And this is the autopilot. This again is an Avidyne unit. It's a DFC 90. This again is going to stay. And up here on the right hand side of the panel, still undecided whether I keep the glove box area. That may stay, that may go. Air conditioning is going to remain the same, but I'm going to put a couple of extra things here which are actually really going to help me out not from an aviation perspective but with the YouTube side of aviation and underneath the primary flight display down here these are my standby instruments these are actually what I used when this failed on me so I can still see at any time I can see my airspeed artificial horizon and also my altimeter there's going to be a big change down here too if there's bits of sandwiches under there as well I'm sorry <laughs> So the one thing I've been learning throughout this process is it's not just a simple case of taking the two existing screens out, having a nice big hole there and putting in two brand new screens, switching them on and then they work first time. There's a lot of additional work that goes on behind the scenes as well. And that's the reason why Stephen is busily behind me. Removing the engine cows, taking the seats out. Basically the team here at Blue Demon, they need to be able to get access to pretty much the whole aircraft. All right, screen number one. This, by the way, is Amy. I haven't introduced her. So Stephen does the engineering side of the aircraft. Amy and the guys that fly avionics look after the avionics. How long do you reckon, realistically, before the screens actually go in? I wouldn't have a clue. Uh... <laughs> Put you on the spot. A couple of weeks. So there's still a couple of weeks worth couple with the wiring, weeks. yeah, before the screens go in. Oh, Stephen, can you help me with one thing? Okay, no, you go, that's fine. Bye, thanks for your help, Stephen, bye. Week two of the project. There's a lot of stuff going on right now, which isn't actually, it's not particularly sexy. There's not a lot of stuff that you can really see, but some of the main changes or the work that's been done are actually around the engine itself. I just want to make it clear that I did ask Stephen, the actual engineer, to help me with this part, but he's off doing something else. So allow a pilot to explain what's actually happening here in the engine. With the new avionics, we've had to put in new probes and sensors in the engine so I can get readouts on the display for things like or the engine temperatures, so the cylinder head temperatures and the exhaust gas temperatures. They require new sensors to be put into the engine, which interface with the new avionics. These are the exhaust pipes from the engine. So here, this probe gives me the exhaust gas temperature or the EGT. This one here is the probe that goes into the actual cylinder itself. So this gives me the CHT or the cylinder head temperature. Now the screens themselves haven't arrived at the time that I'm recording this. So what we've got at the moment is we've just got the probes 
in the exhaust system and into the cylinders themselves, but they're not actually connected to anything yet. Back at home now, just working on the layout for the panel design. I'm just doing this in Photoshop, so it's not to scale, but I wanted to give the guys a rough idea of where everything's gonna be laid out on the panel, how I want the screens to appear. It's also a chance for me to have a look at the aesthetics of the panel as well, whilst we're redoing it. And I'm thinking about this pencil thin line of color around the outside. And if you make it red, a thin red line on black, it's kind of got vibes of... What do you think? Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Red line? No red line? Okay, week three of Echo Yankee Zulu's transformation. There are two big things that we're gonna be doing today. The first thing is, you know the panel that you saw me designing. Now the guys from Fly Avionics have done a full mock-up, a full cutout of that, which we're gonna be putting into Echo Yankee Zulu in a second to see how that fits with the new screens. And talking of new screens, they're here. This is the old dash that came out of Echo Yankee Zulu. Obviously, screen one, screen two, this is where the glove box was. This is the old one. This, sorry. Can I grab this? Yeah, yeah. So this is a mock-up which we're going to use just to basically position everything and make sure it's spaced correctly. As you can see, two screens. There's some big differences over here, which I'll come to in a second. Air conditioning units are still going in here, but this is our template. Yes. Is that right, Amy? Yeah. All right, let's see how it fits. Because so they're going to come through in a second. If you've seen Echo Yankee Zulu before, a couple of differences you may notice here. This is what we what we call the annunciator panel. They're no longer physically going to be there because they're going to appear on this screen that we're putting in. Ignition's in the same place. Screen number one, screen number two. And a bigger change over here on the right hand side. Still got obviously the air conditioning temperature control, but the glove box is gone. Because I didn't have a need for the glove box, so this is actually just going to be a nice flat panel. What we're actually going to do is put a RAM mount on here so I can mount one of the GoPros and put a USB power unit here, which is gonna have USB-A and USB-C, so I never need to worry about batteries running out during flight. So what I've got is the mount itself, that's gonna go into the dash, put one of these long arms on it, and on the other end is this GoPro attachment, which obviously the GoPro itself connects to. So I can permanently have a GoPro attached to the aircraft for that view looking in at me, so you can see what I'm doing in the cockpit. So we'll have to come forwards. Yeah. yeah. As long as that goes over the top, so I can go forwards. Yeah and then so I can swivel it round and get the inside shot. Do you mind just holding that for me there, Amy? Because I'm going to just film that. <laughs> this. Okay, the mock panel's in now, as you can see. All the air conditioning temperature controls on the right-hand side are in the ignition switch. That's in as well. The only thing missing are obviously the two main screens. Okay, so by this stage of this video, you are probably wondering what screens and what technology is gonna go into Echo Yankee Zulu. When I was deciding what avionics to put in, it really came down to two options and two brands, to be honest. Replace Avidyne with Avidyne, or do I go a totally different route and choose Garmin? Now, I still have some Avidyne equipment in the aircraft, so it would make sense to keep Avidyne, right? I'm using Avidyne for traffic. I'm also using Avidyne's autopilot. And the new Avidyne Vantage screens would be a good replacement in Echo Yankee Zulu to work with the existing technology. Or there is the option of changing to Garmin. Now, a lot of you know that I do use Garmin products elsewhere. Garmin have got the G1000, which is a classic unit. I've flown with it many times before. But then there's the new Garmin equipment too, the G3Xs, the G500 TXIs. There was a lot of choice. However, we're not actually at the stage where we're ready to put the screens into the aircraft. And I hate to do those things on YouTube where you see to be continued, but 